today we're going to talk about the art of communication, how we can get our message across effectively and break through. No one knows better how to do that than our guest today on Mika Straight Up, Sally Sussman. She is the author of the new book, Breaking Through, and she really explains exactly how to do that. Sally is also Executive Vice President and Chief Corporate Affairs Officer at Pfizer, and she took on the biggest challenge of her career, perhaps even her life, when the COVID-19 pandemic hit. What Sally had to do was win over the hearts and minds of a world that would need to accept the concept of a whole new vaccine immediately. That's a lot. It was. And I remember so well that time of being scared. Mm -hmm. It was late February, early March 2020, and the streets were darker, it felt, and the the shelves were bare. And um, our wonderful CEO, who you know very well, Albert Albert. Borla, said we got to do three things. We need to take care of our 85,000 employees. We need to make sure the steady stream of medicine around the world continues because cancer and other terrible illnesses didn't go on holiday during the pandemic. And I'm happy to report that supply chain did hold up very Mm -hmm. well. And the third thing he said is, and we need to create a vaccine by the end of the year. The first thing I thought about, besides the amazing opportunity to be at the heart of this crisis, was what a tragedy it would be if we developed this wonderful vaccine and then Mm. people were afraid to take it because we hadn't brought them along on the journey. And so I brought everything I've learned for decades to bear and it all crystallized for me during this time of the pandemic. And that is is why I put it all in the book. Talk about the challenge of uh, what your job was, was to break through to build trust in what was becoming an increasing, increasingly divisive political atmosphere, yes. um, which included major vaccine hesitancy. Yes. This must have been like, what, what part of you said this is going to be possible? <laughs> I learned so many things during this time and love to share a few of them with you. Yeah. Um, the first one is the crucial importance of being open, candid, you know, what is sometimes a cliche called transparent. We just had to do everything differently, especially to be very open. And for you, uh, this book, Mm -hmm. who is it for? It's really for two sets of people. Mm -hmm. First is leaders of all kinds. I've worked for nine CEOs over the course of my career at three companies. And all of them were good and special, but the ones that were great were the ones who could articulate a vision. Mm -hmm. They were intentional about the things that they said. They could bring a group like a large company along with them. So whether you're a leader in politics or a big company or your own small business, your ability to be a breakthrough dynamic leader rests in something many people write off as a soft skill, communications. My argument for these leaders is that it's a rock hard competency. It's as important as accounting, inventory, Mm -hmm. manufacturing. So the book is for them. Mm. And the book is also for up and comers in my field. Forbes named you as one of the most influential CMOs for Pfizer's efforts to combat vaccine misinformation. And um, the early days when disinformation was spreading like wildfire, and by the way, it continued. It does. It persists It's an epidemic of its own. Right. So What's the playbook? Did you put together a playbook to deal with vaccine hesitancy? I put together a playbook and then I had to rip it up because (laughs) the original playbook was uh, data and experts. Mm -hmm. Um, And data will always be important. I I don't want to underestimate the importance of data in drug development. It's, It's really important. And when I talk about experts, I assume that you know, major political figures, celebrities, right. sports heroes, that these people would be important in mm-hmm. my campaign. I was wrong. Um, what it was, and this probably won't surprise you, it's stories. Mm. I got to see my grandson at his wedding. Mm. I saw my daughter for the first time in, in a year. These real stories and real people. I am fascinated about... Um what Pfizer and what you um, helped communicate with Russia. 
Mm. I thought this was kind of like another turning point in pharmaceutical history. There was the invasion of Ukraine, and Pfizer was in a very delicate situation. And Sally's team had to decide how and whether they should wade into this crisis. And you wrote, in past years, when companies believe it best to keep their head down and avoid politics, that may have been enough, but not now. Senior executives are expected to speak out based on their values, lead with purpose, and use their platforms to steer the global discussion. And boy, did Pfizer ever do that. I mean, you all made a decision that was right in there, political. It was to make to make a statement, really. We are a humanitarian product. If right. you make medicine, you are exempt from all kinds of blockages and, um, you know, having to pull out. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, a kid with cancer in Russia is a kid with cancer. Yeah. And, and he deserves his medicine as much as anyone. So we were exempt from the sanctions, but it didn't feel good enough. Um, you know, we didn't want to appear to be business as usual about what was happening. Well, and also you, pro you profit. What do you do with the fact that you're profiting from Russia? You, you were grappling with this. That's exactly it. And so uh, what we decided is we, yes, would continue that steady stream of medicine, but every ruple or penny that we earned in Russia, we would donate to the Ukrainian relief effort. And we continue to do that uh, to this day. That was such a bold move. Thank you. You have to think harder and come up with better ideas. It's a yes and for us. Yes, we will continue the medicine, and we will not profit, and we will support Ukraine, and we will be public about it. That's amazing. So I want to ask about um, your career. What is your advice for younger women on perfecting your pitch? Because you've got some great advice in this book. I think the keys to, to getting pitches are really traveling deep inside yourself and, and hearing yourself and listening and speaking authentically and sharing vulnerabilities. I mean, you know, your wonderful Know Your Value audience responded so deeply to a story I told about having to come out in a job interview. Yes. I didn't want to do that, but I, I, there I was in the moment. and That's an I, amazing story. Can you tell oh, it sure. real quick? Thank yeah. you. Um, it was at the Estee Lauder Company's oh final interview, Ronald Lauder. He sits down, and the first thing he says to me is, so, what does your husband do? Mm. And I do wear this, uh, s this small gold band. And with that, before I even had a chance to respond, his assistant ran in. There was uh, the Israeli prime minister was on the phone for Ronald, he excused himself to take the call, and I sat there and started to sweat. Oh, my God. You know, what was I going to say? I mean, I, I didn't want to be closeted, but it certainly wasn't the first thing right. I wanted to say. And so I said to him, Ronald, thank you for asking about my family and for wanting to get to know me. I have a wonderful partner, and she and I are raising a beautiful little girl, and her support for me really makes me the executive I am today. And he stopped and he paused and I thought, well, I can pick up my things and go home now. And he said, you'll be a wonderful spokeswoman for our company. Oh, wow. Wow. And it was just... I get chills and I hear that story. You took the chance. I did. And he, he met me. He was wonderful. He met me in that moment. He and met, we're, he met we're you. We're good friends now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I am curious as we close, um, what's next for you? I am. I want to go after the next pandemic, which I think is disinformation. And I know you know you st you you work in your career to bring truth to light and voices to be heard. And there are evil forces that are spreading misinformation, that are against science, that don't believe in truth. And, and all of these things are deeply important to me coming out of this experience. Well, I will join you on that one. <laughs> Sally Sussman, uh, author of Breaking Through, Communicating to Open Minds, Move Hearts, and Change the World. Thank you so much for being on Mika Straight Up. Thank you, Mika.